an assistant chief architect here at DHCW. And um, I'm going to be taking you through a lot of slides this morning that kind of are here to give you a flavour of what the subsequent meetings will be talking about. Um, hopefully it will raise some uh, interesting discussion. Uh, if you've had a hearty breakfast this morning, um, you'll either sleep through this or you'll be thankful that your hearty breakfast will take you to the end. Um, the session is being recorded um, and uh, you know, you'll be able to play this back and and, uh, and look at the things if, you, if, if I've gone into them a little bit too quickly. I'll try and keep it a, a, at a reasonable pace. Now, in terms of this, um, this presentation, it's quite a difficult one to pitch because we've got a mixture of um, people in the audience here. And I'm conscious that people are at, um, at different stages in their, under, in their understanding. So I am going to keep, I'm going to take it to the very bottom, um, the, the bottom of the tank and, uh, and start from the ground up. And hopefully um, I can bring everybody um, with us. So if some of this is well rehearsed to some of the more technical people, apologies. I, I hope that you will see some goodness a little bit later on in the presentation. Uh, and the presentation is kind of a journey. Um, so um, just mindful of that if you have any questions that uh, that hopefully it will answer some of those things on your mind along the way. Um, so let's let, let's have a look at the agenda this morning. Then. So. What we're going to talk about this morning is the concepts of opening the architecture. We're going to talk a little bit about firework streams. Now there's a fire, um, there's a fire building block this afternoon um, presentation um, uh, that goes into the detail of technologies and and uh, and interesting stuff. This morning we're going to uh, talk about the fire stuff really in the context of opening up the architecture. Um, and we're also going to talk about the vision for this national data repository or data platform as well. Um, how how that might look. Um, those are the kind of the the, the 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 high level themes there. Now, teams is 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 difficult to um, to manage when you're presenting in terms of taking questions and looking at hands. So um, so my colleague Rebecca Cook is managing all that for us this morning, um, and we've cr we've created a mentee here. Um, it's not a set of mad word clouds. We, we've just got two things that we really uh, we really want to put up. Number one is the first mentee will be a, uh, a a place where you can put questions. Just it just seems a little bit for those people that can. If you can put them in mentee, I think it would be um, it, it would be very helpful for us. If you can't use mentee, if you've got firewall issues or whatever, it's fine to put them in the Teams chat. Uh, Rebecca will um, will will keep an eye on on that. I will stop at different points in the presentation just to take a breather and to maybe address some of the questions that um, that arise. Um, the, the second, uh, as I say, the mentee is going to have two slides effectively. One is for questions and also we're going to have one at the end for feedback. And um, I'd absolutely welcome your feedback on this session. Uh, this is very much a journey. It's a it's a kind of where we are where, at a point in time based on our current thinking. It's a sharing of I, uh, of ideas and uh, and proposals, and um, uh, and it's something that um, you know I encourage you to, to 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 engage with as much as possible. Hey, I think that's um, I think that's the, the the admin sorted. So let's let's start with talking about opening. Um, the architecture. So again, apologies here if you've um, seen slides like this before, or some of this is well rehearsed to you. Um, I, I hope it will reach um, a, a destination that, uh, that, that, that that is new to you. So let's talk about opening up the architecture within the lens of um, the current national systems. So I hope you can see my, my, my mouse pointer because I'll move it around quite a lot in this presentation. So let's um, let, let's look at it from a health board perspective at the moment. There's a lot of goodness, isn't there, in our national systems. We have uh, diagnostics and we have a demographics master patient index. We have images, we have documents. 
and lots of good stuff on the on the right hand side here. And effectively, if you are in a health board, if you want to get to that information, then you have to come via the the Welsh Clinical Portal. That is the interface, the the front door, effectively into these um, into these back end systems. Also, the systems that are the, 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 where the front door is, um, the systems at the back end are a mixture of, they, they sit on a mixture of repositories, they've been developed in different ways, and they've been developed over time by, by, by NWIS. So they're effectively N, NWIS in, in, inside. Um, so the question is, in this opening up the architecture piece, is I'm a health board, yeah? Uh, what if I don't want to use the Welsh Clinical Portal as the front door? You know, how can that data be accessed without going through that front door? So what, what we'll do to try and kind of put some perspective on that is let's look at the problem through the perspective of WERS, the Welsh Results Report Service. Yeah. So where do we start? So on the right hand side here is words, and let's just uh, just understand how diagnostics data gets into that back end system at the moment. So the system is a is a Microsoft SQL server um, developed by by Enwis, and basically it takes feeds from Radis and Limbs, amongst others. Um, it takes HL7 feeds um, uh, and consumes them as, uh, as XML. So basically the sources on the left, Radis is a, a radiology system, LIMS is our pathology system. Those produce HL7 messages and those HL7 messages make their way into our WERS system as XML. It doesn't happen by magic though. And there's this dude in, in the middle, um, our integration hub, it's called Fiorano, message broker, godfather, king, soul brother number one. It's our main, um, it, it, it's our main way where systems uh, can send messages to, to, to other systems. That's our, that, that's our, our, our current product. So if we look at it from the, uh, the view of the Radis piece then, to get for, for, for Radis messages, to actually um, reports to get populated into SQL Server, the Radis system will push an HL7 message to Fiorano, and Fiorano will transform that message to XML and push it to words, which will which will then consume and, 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 and present it. So similarly with limbs, it's exactly the same deal. Messages gets pushed, HL7 to Fiorano, and Fiorano will transform those messages from HL7 to XML and push them to the WERS server. So that's a summary of the uh, 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 of that process for uh, for WERS. So WERS holds a load of other diagnostics as well, things like cardiology. And it does it does more than just take diagnostics stuff, but for the purposes of this uh, this presentation, it's just to show really um, the uh, how Fiorano works with those source systems. And Fiorano, as I say, it, it, it is it is the is the man in our um, in our service. It stands in the middle and pushes messages, takes messages from different clinical systems and passes them to other different diff, um, different clinical systems and, uh, and reporting services. So let's think about WERS now. We've said that WERS is a SQL database. So if I was to uh, give a health board access to that WERS server, how, how would I, how could I do that? So if it's a SQL server, 
I've asked some I've asked some simple questions here. You know, did, would I share the the schema of that SQL server with health boards and and help them write you know select queries against those um, against the, the data in that database? And also remember the front door at the moment of words is the Welsh Clinical Portal, which deals with all all the security aspects of uh, of getting to that data. So if I was to present WERS to a health board, then I would need to um, have uh, a bouncer at the front door to uh, make sure that those people who want data are allowed to have it and those people that don't won't. So I could do that. And it brings us on to the digital architecture review that was done by Channel 3. So basically they were saying that you know, WERS is an example of a uh, of an NWIS proprietary data um, system, um, whereby they're all built differently and they all speak different languages effectively. So, if you know, if I want to find a patient with the family name of Smith, then you know these are speaking different languages. I'd need to ask that in a different language, depending on what system. Um, I want to get that data out of, and I think the Welsh, um, uh, the architecture review, kind of said, you know, that's not a sustainable way of uh, of going forward, and we need to move to a to to, to a, an open platform into a language uh, using language that, um, that that is common. So, I guess that's what the purpose of fire is for us. So. I'm just flicking between the slides here. So these systems go from speaking proprietary languages, in this case, Welsh and French and um, Italian and, uh, and, uh, and German, to speaking fire. So now if they all spoke fire, then if I want to find patients with the family name of Smith, then the command I use would be the same. It'd be, it's a universal standard. Uh, that, I, that, that we would use. Now, I've used the example on the right there as if, if they were all separate fire repositories in, in their own right. But of course, you know, as we go down the journey, we, we, we could end up using uh, an Uber fire repository um, that contains all that, um, that contains all that data. So this is a definition of what fire is, provides us some consistent simple to use schema of standard definitions to represent clinical data and it uses five resources the basic building block there are about a hundred resources which are typically used to exchange clinical content such as encounters care plans diagnostic orders and they're also extensible they can be uh, customized and adapted um, if they don't contain the information that, uh, that, that that we want them to contain um, this is a technical diagram that shows what a fire schema looks like, um, what the contents of, uh, of, uh, of, a, uh, of a fire message would look like, and they're optimized. It's optimized for the exchange of data using the REST APIs. This is um, for those that aren't in the in into fire in a big way. Um, this is about how you would model a consultation using fire so on the right hand side here these these dots effectively represent what they call fire resources patient encounter condition observation medication allergy intolerance so what this example is showing is that 12 year old boy goes to a, a gp complains of pain in the right ear for three days with an elevated temperature i'm not going to go i'm not going to go through this it's basically a scenario there but what this diagram shows is how that scenario would be modeled using fire uh, using a fire uh, schema and fire terminology so um yeah it's quite interesting so in terms of what we want to do in the fire space, um, this is this is very much a journey for us. And I guess there are a number of work streams that we um, that we want to uh, go through. One is um, to build a, a fire facade, 
for WERS queries. I'll come back to, I'll come back to these in more detail in a second. We want to build an on-premise fire server to service demographics queries. And we also want to build and test um, some cloud-based fire services as well. Now I haven't looked at Teams, um, and I, I'm, I'm going to have I'm going to stop there for a second and just ask if any Becca, are there any questions at this point? No questions. Okay. Oh, sorry. One one question just came through on the Menti, eh, George. Are okay. existing are existing local systems able to take on HL7 fire terminology, or is this extra work for the NDR team? I think the answer to that is um, uh, make sure you 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 stick with this presentation. We'll answer that later on. Thank you. Okay. And if there's nothing else, I'm I'm going to I'm going to continue on. So first, of these is it, it talks about creating a fire facade. So so what so what is a fire facade? So Remember, we talked earlier on about this, um, this 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 way of finding patients with the family name of Smith. So, if I redevelop my WRRS system, then I want it to be able to use this fire terminology to to, to, to find that answer. But there's a lot of hard yard there, there, there's a lot of hard yards in, in in doing that and in presenting, you know, in, in a in, in the the ideal world, diagnostics would be represented as a native fire repository. So what can we do in the meantime, though, so that we could present data that sits in that SQL database at the bottom as fire? So the answer is, is we put something in the middle called a facade, which basically works like Google Translate, I suppose. That's how I, how I see it. So. When you ask, you can ask that question of the facade, you know, um, send that HTTP message with patient name Smith in. The facade picks it up and it does that. It's like a, it's like a duck with his legs swimming underwater, I suppose. That takes that, um, it takes that fire query and turns it into a SQL query that the word system will understand. Yeah, so it's it's basically a middleman. So it will take it will take incoming fire messages, pass them to Wurz, and when Wurz passes that stuff back as SQL to the facade, the facade will return that information as fire. That's a fire facade. And the product that we um, the product that we're going to use to present this fire facade. Is a product made by a company called Firely. I think Firely are the the Google, the Microsoft, the Facebook of the of, of the fire world. Um, certainly the most um, innovative and, and and progressive of the suppliers, and they're very well respected. And they run Fire Dev Days, at which all the big companies like Microsoft and Google will speak at. Um, so they, they have this product, which is a very effectively a .NET application that's customizable, uh, that allows you to create this fire facade. And our plan is to create that fire facade to sit in front of our WERS server in the first instance. Are there any questions about the fire facade? Are you allowed to speak over the mic? You are indeed. Few, because <laughs> I've just broken the rule if it wasn't. Um, it's fine. So, so in terms of the uh, Firely application, is that uh, I, I heard you say you can customize it for your particular um, particular mapping? Is that like a code change, or is it like driven by a state machine with a like a document definition of what your interface is southbound? So I can see, you know, in my mind, I can see other systems sitting behind this, not necessarily just SQL, but perhaps other web services that could be called. Mm -hmm. So so how does that work? Is it a state machine? Is it configurable or is it actually a code change? It's code change. It's it, it's code change. So they I, th I there's no I don't I, I think I think I think if my colleague Mark is on on the call, maybe you can you can um, say a little bit more about the facade. Um, hi, yes, George. Um, 
Yes, you're right in saying it's a code change. What you do is develop um, something called um, a, a plugin developed in, in .NET. It works very well if you're speaking to SQL Server. Um, it speaks very well using Entity Framework to, to, to speak to your data, but it's not limited to speaking to a, a SQL Server backend. It could equally be a facade on top of a, a, a different set of, um, for example, SOAP web services. Um, so there is there is coding to do to code these plugins which you um, deploy within your facade to do that 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 Google Translate piece. The um, the, the the Firely facade tooling gives you um, lots of it, it's very clever the way it works. There's a lot of functionality. So 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 the API call there is is, is quite a simple one. It's you know finding a, a patient whose name is Smith. You've got lots of, um, you know, the, the fast verification. You can do end up doing quite complex queries and queries across different sorts of resources, rather like, you know, doing joins in a in a in a traditional SQL join query. Um, so it offers you loads of, of of tools to 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 help you meet the fire standard as, as easily possible. Um, but the, the short answer to your question is 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 it's 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 C sharp code. Okay. So, so you basically you've got sort of a, a business logic layer which allows you to create some rules ar around which uh, plugin to call to find the information. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Perfect. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? I've, All got, right. a, I've got a few questions flying in on the mentee, George, but but nothing specific to the fire facade. So I'll okay. pass them for now. Hi, George. Okay. I've, got, I've got a quick question. It's Fergus Lean here. Um, right. is, is finally fixed um, as you know, one of the principles was moving forward with open source. Um, so is it is it fixed using finally and is it fixed using .NET to well, use these things? Is this no. okay? No. So 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 what I'm what I'm talking about here is is a is a journey this morning really. Um, we we see the fire facade as a quick win. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a way of being able to present data as fire in a you know a, a, a codey kind of environment but no that isn't that that, that isn't what our long-term uh, or what you know what our long-term uh, plan is at all it's just um it's just a staging it's just a stage in the road for us i, I just say that because um, there's some very nice open source solutions to this problem as well sure 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 um yeah yeah we, very happy to take take on that, that that offline as well um, if if you like if you're very interested to uh, to pick up on any experience you've got in in that area okay great um okay so that's the facade but let's say the facade is kind of a sticking plaster really i mean what 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 we really want to do is get those so thinking about that diagram that we put on earlier you know we want to get the the limbs data and the radis data and the cardiology data. We want that into a native fire repository, really, and not do this, um, not not do this kind of Google Translate thing uh, using a fire facade. So, in terms of creating the fire server, just to to recap what I just said there, that the uh, that's that diagram I showed you earlier about how data from radis and limbs gets into WERS. So, WERS is effectively a subscriber of these data feeds that Fiorano send and um, send it and um, send it. So, uh, how could we how could we do that with 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 fire? So, what what we're talking about here is is adding a fire server in with using Firely um, as uh, in in the first instance the Firely server, um, and that will become basically a it will be you know. Um, filled with the goodness of the uh, diagnostics data to a point it'll be um it, it will be inflated with all, with, with what there is up to now but then it would be a subscriber in the same way as words would be a subscriber to that diagnostic data and it will start receiving the same messages out of those systems as words so the idea is to build this diagnostics fire server um, alongside now there's um there's a presentation uh, building block specifically about diagnostics that that will pick up this in in more detail and uh, and 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 raise some of the hard yards that will be uh, involved in that piece of work. Um, 
also on the, the diagram at the, at the right is that we see Firely as the as a, a as a as a good as a good fire server as something that we could is something that we could deploy quite quickly on premise uh, and has that support mechanism from Firely there should we need it it's um it, it's a it's a it's a it's a trusted platform, I suppose, and, and we plan to build. We're trying. We, we plan to build that on-prem in the first instance, and we'll talk about on-prem and cloud and stuff as we go. Um, as a parallel activity, um, we would like to. We, we're aware of the the Fire server products that are available in the cloud marketplace, and of the three main providers. Um, we're very interested in um, in the work that Google have been doing in the fire space. And what we would like to do as a parallel activity to this work is to um, is to run up a fire server in that environment as well and, and, and kick the tires of that. I'll come on to more about um, uh, about that later on in the presentation. So on the right hand side here is a summary of what we're you know what we want to do. Is to create that fire facade that sits in front of words and we want to create a fire server as well that um, there is a native repository of fire data of course i asked that question earlier on about um you know if you're making this data available um we need some bouncers at the door for people that are asking so you'll be aware that um we're procuring an API manager at the moment, um, the HCW NDR, uh, working through a procurement process at the moment to, um, to pick an API manager that will sit in front of these services and adjudicate who can and can't come in and do all that logging and all the goodness that, um, that an API manager will, will, will provide. So in terms of the fire server, um, our whilst my diagram says about diagnostics, because diagnostics was a good thing to talk about up until then, we really focused in the first instance um, on diagnostics in front of the fire facade. The first repository that we, we, we'd like to create is a demographics repository. So uh, that's, the, that's the subject of the, of the, next, um, the, the next few slides. Now I've talked about the API management very briefly there. Um, is there any are there any questions at this point? Okay, so I'm taking silences, Golden Beck. Yeah, nothing in specific to these slides. Yeah. Thank you. So we talked about the facade. So if we we want to focus on building a fire server to service demographic queries. So a bit of background for people um, here. So we've got loads of different systems, haven't we? Uh, and so for instance, on this diagram, we've got an emergency system, we've got the radiology system, we've got the PAS system, we've got pathology. So these are all different systems, but they're also distinct patient admin systems because they all contain uh, details of patients in them, people's names, addresses, their age, all, all, all that, all that good stuff. Um, they, they, they are, they are, they are passes in their own right. And what we need to do is because they are um, passes in their own right, and Mrs. Smith here in Old Street appears in all those different systems. And um, what we need to do is we need to make sure that. If Mrs. Smith changes her address, that all those systems get um, updated with that change of address and it's done effectively. So let's say, for example, that um, Mrs. Smith here moves from 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 Old Street to to, to New Street. Um, you know, she's rocked up to the um, to the emergency department with a broken arm, and she said, "I've changed my address." So at this point. When that system is updated in where in 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 words, then the other systems will uh, have out-of-date information about her address. 
So we've got this thing in the middle called the master patient index. And what happens is, is that these are all, these are all connected to the, M, um, to the MPI um, and they're connected using Fiorano. Um, so in this case, she's changed her address. WEDS will tell the master patient index. Mrs. Smith is now living at one new street. And the master patient in index takes it upon itself to go and um, uh, tell the other systems to update the address data for Mrs. Smith in their respective systems. So the master patient index actually does two things. Yeah. So it maintains a registry of that demographic information on every patient who receives healthcare services so it basically so thinking about that weds piece yeah it, it's got clever deterministic and probabilistic methodologies that look at that uh, data from weds and sees it's mrs smith and it understands that it's the same mrs smith in all those other systems that it needs to update so it does it does the the clever reckoning of the of the data sets that it needs to update it also does another thing, which is it responds to demographic queries and patient lookup requests. And in terms of our focus for fire, it's that latter piece that we're interested in, 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 in addressing. So it's to use fire to remove uh, the MPI of the burden of servicing those demographic lookups. So it just focuses on the matching and, and making sure that, you know, the web system is up to date with the PaaS system and, and, and all that. And we want to take the burden away from the um, from the current MPI system for the, the demographics queries. So let's go back to this diagram. Um, now we've got rid of limbs on the left and we've talked about we're talking about the master patient index. So so this is the deal. Um, MPI, any changes? Um, we'll get pushed to uh, we'll get um, pushed to Fiorano, which will then go and update those receiving systems. So obviously, in the previous diagram, I've had Weds and, and WPAS and Lims and, and Radis. So again, in the same way as we talked about um, diagnostics earlier and making the fire diagnostics server a subscriber of that data for demographics, that's what we want to do here. We want to create um this demographics fire repository um seed it with all the demographics information and then once it's seeded to then take those um those messages those subscribe um that want to subscribe to those mpi messages in the same way as those other systems will um will be receiving those messages so we build it kind of alongside what we've uh, what, what, what we've got in place at the moment so again, this is a this is just another summary picture. I've just moved the I've just moved the bits around really in this just to just to just to um, hammer it home. The Filey facade. We want to focus on demographics with the Filey server in the first instance, and in the first instance, <coughs> excuse me, we want to use Filey on prem on premise. So that is a uh, uh, you know the architecture for that is Windows, .NET, SQL Server, traditional, good, solid, honest stuff, um, and we want to just do it on premise because it's the because we know we can rock it up quickly in that environment. Um, if we if you know once we've finished testing this stuff, when it goes into production, we will look at platforming that into Azure instead. So instead of having, you know, monolithic virtual machines, Windows virtual machines and, you know, a shared SQL server, we'll look at um, we'll look at using platform as a service and web apps to host that and and Azure SQL database at the, uh, at, the at the back end in a live environment. But that's not to say that's what we're going to ultimately do, um, because we're looking alongside. We're looking at. Um, we're we're going to look at the Google Cloud as well. Um, 
we think that is by far the most mature um, fire platform out there, managed fire platform. And uh, I would encourage um, uh, you to attend this afternoon's meeting for a discussion about those different cloud-based fire platforms and what they offer beyond fire as well. Um, because the fire server is, is, is one part of the jigsaw really, isn't it? It's just a place where, you know, you'll be able to get at that data, but that doesn't really service requirements for, for, for reporting. Um, and also um, the scalability, there, there are issues around scalability as well. So, um, you know, from an, if I had my old infrastructure tin hat on, then, you know, my questions around performance and scalability of the fire firely server platform, you know, how do I size that? You know, if we'll talk later about what our ambitions are with fire and, you know, it's it's a, it's a good challenging problem that we that, that, that we have if we if, if we build something that isn't cloud cloud based. So. The Google Cloud platform here, so there are two there are two pieces really to it uh, that we'd like to run as a parallel activity. One is to kick the tires of the actual fire managed service there <coughs> and to look at some of the um, the onward pieces, the onward additional bits of value that they provide in terms of de-identification, streaming to secondary data sources, provenance of fire data, um, that there's, it, there's, there's a lot in it uh, that, 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 that's worth looking at and we will look to do that standalone, just using synthetic data. And we'll also look to do that uh, after we've done it with synthetic data, we'll look to connect that up if it's a success to our test environment and do the same thing as we're doing for demographics on the Firely platform in the Google Cloud. So are there any, are there any questions on? on, on uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I won't pick up all of them because I think you're going to cover a lot as you go through these slides, George. A um, couple I think are relevant right now. Um, one is, um, so the plan is to duplicate the EMPI in a secondary location, but in fire. Question? Yeah, effect, effect, yes, effectively for the dev, to, to service demographic queries, yes. Yeah. Um, the next one is you've picked up on the Google Cloud platform, but you haven't actually evaluated, tried it yet. How do you know it's fit for purpose? I would refer you to this afternoon's building block meeting uh, to, 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 to discuss that. Um, in terms of fit for purpose, uh, we don't know that it's fit for in we On paper, it looks fit for purpose, but until, un, until those tires are properly kicked, then you know we reserve we reserve the uh, we reserve any uh, uh, any conclusions about that platform. Um, thanks, George. The next one is around security and identity. Is there a plan to support smart on fire or something similar? Well, we anticipate we anticipate managing the security through the API management product that we're buying. Um, and there was another question around for the for that question. Does the does the um does the person that posed that question do they want to um do they want to clarify anything on the smart on fire question? Yeah, I don't know who asked it. Okay. Um, is is the asker wanting to elaborate on that? Yeah, it is. So so okay. Um. If 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 you if 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 you need to if you want any more information about that we can talk about we can talk about that put it in the chat or we can talk about it offline. But our plan is is to is 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 to make the front door the um through to the API manager. Okay, thanks. Um, the and and a similar sort of question was where is access control located? But I guess it's the same answer really in the API management. That's correct. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that's it for these slides, George. Okay, cool. So the fire thing is a journey for us, isn't it? Um, it, it things, you know, it's not going to be here um, 
tomorrow and it's a, it, it's a place where we'd, we'd, we'd like we, we'd like to get to. Let's go back to this diagram though that we um, that we put up earlier. And the left hand side is well rehearsed here, isn't it? So we have data that comes from these <coughs> systems at the moment from Radis and, and LIMS and, and, and other systems and it goes through our message broker. So that is HL7 data at the moment. And um, one thing that we that we can do is that we can service um, that HL7 data to health boards through Fiorano. So fire is a journey. Um, if there's a requirement to get that data via the, 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 the way it is at the moment, then I think we um, I think we're interested in in formulating some uh, requirements there and seeing how we can service those requirements more immediately. Um, I think I think that's I, I think that's it on the opening up of the um, the opening up of the architecture piece. Um, as I say, the, I, I try I, I I'm conscious that for people that want to understand more about fire, and you know the um, more about the fire facade and all, all that good stuff. I definitely refer them to this afternoon's meeting. Um, this is just really to give you a, a basic flavour of how we uh, of how we intend to to open up the architecture. Um, I, I, and with that, um, it, it kind of takes us on to the next uh, onto the next piece really, and we've come on to it a lot quicker than um, a lot quicker than I thought. Um, and that's to talk um, a little bit about the kind of the, the, the national data resource. Um, and uh, I, I think it's too early for a break because we've only been gone about half an hour. So I'm going to crack on and, and, and start talking about that. So <coughs> I'm going to talk about a vision here of a, of, a, of a national data repository, and I'm going to build it up bit by bit. And, and and I want to say at this point that um, the NDR are commissioning a data strategy, um, and that data strategy is effectively, you know, synthesizing themes and and and, and needs. Um, it, that, that's the plan is to find out, you know, what the what the requirements are out there, to formalize them, I suppose, um, and to help inform um, what a 2B architecture would look like. Um, it, it will look at the as is and it will look at why the as is is or isn't up to up to the job at the moment. Um, but it, it's really about you know looking at requirements we've captured today to engaging with people just to ensure that we're on the right track um, uh, and, and give us clear guidance I suppose on on what we need to on what we need to deliver and how. Um, so the slide deck I'm showing you now doesn't seek to to preempt any of that. But what I wanted to do is to share you uh, a vision that is kind of based on a very extensive discovery process based on, you know, best practice and, and, and functionality available um, out there. Um, so, so so let me start by painting the, the the picture here so i've talked about um i've talked about firely earlier on um and what i'd really what what we, what we really need to deliver in the fire piece is a national is a national fire server um a, a national ser a national file server that kind of works at transactional speed you know it's a transactional database that is highly performant and scalable on demand you know a real-time fire transactional data store like home for our data that's based on open interoperability standards so we call we, we, we we've called it a, a welsh care data repository and, and this fire repository is going to be a place where kind of our existing w systems you know, will find a new home for their data. Ultimately, it's a, as I said, it's a journey, and the idea is to 
it, it is to build this so that so that this becomes the transactional store for for for, for data and it, it devolves out of the of the w systems into this kind of open standard so, so so this must serve ultimately service the needs of our national systems and of course we've talked about demographics and diagnostics so far uh, for which we've got those building blocks uh, sessions scheduled uh, we're also looking beyond that at encounters and a number of other uh, things as well um, so the Let's, let's flip the let's flip the slide to the next the, the next piece. So any fire the fire server, as as we've seen in the diagrams, it has to integrate with our national integration hub. We've spoken about Fiorano earlier, and that integration hub is what brokers those messages between all our different systems. And what we'll look to do is create pipelines from that integration hub take hl7 messages from the key w systems and go and convert that data and persist it into a national fire store and as part of this review that we with the review festival that we that we with the start of we're also looking at a future beyond fiorano um and we're determining like a roadmap uh to a to a different platform a different integration platform that is kind of based more on open standards and placing uh, less of a reliance, I suppose, on commercial off the shelf products. Um, and there is a building block session about integration that, uh, that, that, that I'd heartily encourage you to, to, to attend to find out more um, about that. So let's carry on the fire journey here. So we've talked about um, integration there. So then, um, this thing has to be performant and scalable, as I said, and, um, and you know, just be really fast. And it's a transactional fire server. And as well as it being used by national systems, you know, it, it, it also needs to, um, to be a source um, for local organizations, whether they're health boards or other organizations to push fire data to. Um, uh, and the scalability of that is really important, such that um, so that it could act as our let's talk about we've talked about the system of systems here in the past. Um, but what we need is something that we need something that is big, scalable, performance here that can basically take data from uh, local CDRs, the methods by which we need to we need to establish, but we need to make sure that the building block is there that is capable of of. of of taking that data um, and, and, and servicing and servicing that data as well. Um, also, um, what else is there about fire? So the other thing is this thing on the right, isn't there? So this this fire server is our iPhones speak fire at the moment, don't they? So if you've got a health application on your iPhone, then the data in that health application is held in fire format. And that data can be pushed, can't it, to um, via the Internet of Things to somewhere central where that data can be persisted. So, whilst that's not today's priority, we need to we need to keep that in mind um, as part of you know what our fire store should look like and what um, what customers it should service. I'm going to stop there. Um, to see if anybody's got any questions or raised anything that I may have said that's controversial. A few questions, George, <laughs> flying in thick and fast. Okay. Um, okay, so um, will systems currently accessing the MPI directly for demographics be expected to move to the Firebase repo? And if so, would that wait for the strategic solution, i.e. the cloud-based one? That's a, yes, uh, it, it wouldn't, it, it, it will, it will, they'll move to the right platform, I think is the answer. So, and essentially, I suppose that there is a building block session specifically on demographics, isn't there, where that roadmap and that discussion can take place? 
Yes. Yeah, I think that is that right, Rob? Have we got? Have yeah, we got... I, I, I'll, I'll be picking that one up on 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 Friday. Um, you know, there's a there's a journey as wow. as, as George has pointed out on wow. on all of these Thank things you. and how we move to to the the end stage. I think, which is actually accessing the fire resource. Um, in that kind of cloud-based repo is 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 where where we're directing um, um, the, the you know the, the the kind of journey. Um, but there are opportunities for some interim steps along the way. Um, you know, including um, um, certainly via the API management solution, making access to existing services um, more open. Um, those existing services being H L seven uh, APIs through the form of PIX and PDQ. And also potentially using, you know, facade technology in the way that George has described to wrap those APIs. So we'll be talking about that on Friday. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Okay, next question. Who is actually going to convert every piece of data available into fire, which is certainly not a small or quick task? No, absolutely. That's my other question. <laughs> well, no one, no one disagrees that, you know, that there aren't going to be some hard yards involved here. Um, I, I, I think you know it's acknowledged that you know that this is a this is a journey. We're not going to get it all solved tomorrow. Thanks, George. Um, the fire store also needs to serve health board needs. How are you rolling that into your design process? Can, whoever's asked that question, can they can they expand upon their question? Or, 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 have I, or did we answer? Did we answer it um, later on? Um, sorry, the sound rights, and this is me. Um, no, I, I can I, I continue this in the next one. Um, I'm, uh, you know, this process in October is extremely welcome, but it also been very much an inside DHCW process, and I'm just curious to know what your plans are for moving forward with a more sort of um, collaborative co-design as we move on from fire. Because the, the, there's fire has an awful lot of potential, uh, but we very much need the whole process, whole design approach to it to be open, Absolutely. as well as the standard itself yeah. being open and the repositories being open. Yeah. And we can park that until later on if it's being addressed. But I just thought it was worth yeah, highlighting let's, that. Let's, let's pick let's pick that up this afternoon, shall we? Yeah. The, the other thing that, that I would add, really, because that goes on to the next question, which I think you said was from you, Anne, which was about, you know, whilst this is a welcome process, this review session, how do we move forward from the reviews to actually the collaborative um, approach to the co-design? So I, I think that's a really good process question, really, which, which ties in with the redrafting of things like the terms of reference for the technical steering group, things like the interoperability standards group and Welsh Technical Standards Board. I think there's a bigger question really, isn't there, about how we work together and how we sign off everything. So, George, I think that is um, it, it for the questions specifically for a second. Okay, okay. that's great. Uh, I thought I'd just pause there to, because that was kind of, that, that's kind of a good place to stop on, on the fire piece. Uh, there is one. George, sorry. sorry. As I'm saying that, two questions flew in and I don't want to ignore them. Um, will we be looking to hold any patient held maintained data in the WCDR? Patient held, I, I'm presuming we're talking the yeah. SPT sort of. Yes. Yeah? Well, well, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and will the open air WCDR be considered as a local CDR feeding into the fire WCDR? Uh -huh. I'll answer that question in a minute, guys. The approved preempting the slides. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Beck? No, you're good to go, George. Okay. So uh, just a couple, just one more thing to say about the uh, about the fire stuff then. So I, I'm going to move this now towards that. Um, I kind of hinted at it earlier on. So this is about an operational fire store. This is about um, uh, about servicing um, requests in, in in real time to to to, to systems. Um, what what we also want to do is we need to present this data as uh, for secondary use in the analytics space. 
So um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit more now about the about the analytics piece. But before I do, just to just to wrap up the fire piece. So so this this fire store, this kind of national fire store, we, we, we'll want to keep um, we we'll want to have copies of this data. that may be in a de-identified format. Don't worry, guys. Sorry about the um, the change of the diagram here. But the only thing that's changed is this is this arrow on the right here. So. Um, what, what we'd like to be able to do as well is de-identify fire data so for, for reporting purposes. So, for instance, if you wanted to take a subset of your fire repository, some encounters data for a certain health board, or you, and you want, or you want to publish some data out of that repository for research purposes, then what we want to do is to be able to create these, this concept of a de-identified fire store, whereby we can control um, we, we can control the data that flows into those DID fire stores, and we can define which bits of information we want to redact or obscure um, uh, as, uh, and, and stream that data. Ideally, we want to so ideally we want to stream this data in real time. So if something changes here then I want to be able to stream a de-identified copy of that data into this into these fire stores in real in, in, in near real time. Um, so so this this is um this is a this is a, a really um, important consideration and the I, I would say and we'll talk about it this afternoon, but the engineering to do this should not be underestimated and and, and certainly um, some platforms can can do this a lot better than a, a lot better than others. So let's talk about the let's talk about the empty lake house that I that I just put on the stream screen here. So that fire data, as I said, I, as well as being able to stream that data and and de-identify that the, the data on, on you know in real time, I want to be able to stream that that data into a in, into a data lake house. Um, so anything that changes in that live system, I want to be able to, to to make available in a a warehouse lake house environment for people to to, to do work on, and that um, that lake house um, it, it is a lake house because it has to be a performant data warehouse, doesn't it? It has to be something that can can take you know stream and batch data because that it's not just the fire stuff that we are. Um, that, that's in our circle of concern here. We need to build. We need to use something, build something that is performant to be able to take all kinds of data at all different types of speeds. Um, and talking about the the, the warehouse, I, I, I want to talk a little bit about the cataloging of data in a lake house. Now, for me, hope for everybody, you know. You know, a national data store has got to have some very robust data stewardship at the centre. You know, this is a national platform where there'll be many demands of the uh, 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 of that data, and you know that stewardship has to be, you know, managed. It has to be at the centre, I suppose, and uh, and it has to be managed according to some very solid data sharing agreements and some and some very good governance and. There, you know, to do that, um, we'd we'd have to manage that. I think through an electronic enterprise data catalog, and the cataloging is 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 so important, isn't it? You know, that it's the place, isn't it, where all data is effectively classified and catalogued. You know, who are the data show in there? You can see who are the providers of the data, who are the consumers of the data. It should tell you. You know what are the agreements and conditions where that data can be used, and whether that data is PII data or whether it can be shared in um, its native format or redacted format. We have to. It has to give us an indication of where the data has come from as well. So there's there's two things here. There's there's this concept of provenance and and, and lineage. So we want to know, don't we? This this central catalog has to tell us where the data has come from and what the pipelines that were used to, to bring that data in. And then the lineage of that data, you know, that's really helpful in, particularly in troubleshooting when we've got problems. If we're constantly pipelining data into a national lake house, 
we need a place that we can look at to see when if a, if a part in the um, in the pipeline breaks, we want something that will be able to see where it's broken quite quickly. And that's uh, and that uh, and that's, you know, that's a that's a key. That's a key task, I think, for the for the catalogue. Um, it should also allow us to link stuff. So linkage is is a is a really key field, isn't it? In um, a key problem in 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 information management, and it has to provide us a way of of linking fields um, from source data sets together. Um, and I, I have some diagrams about this, and I'm, I'm very I'm conscious that it, this isn't a discussion about data cataloging, but I'd be very happy to go through more slides about this, um, it, you know, either later today or or, or or a separate session. But really, it's important that you know if I've got three or four different source data sets, I need to know that you know the last name in each of those data sets, you know, equals last name. Um, because you can link, you know, in a, in a data catalog, you can link all that data together. Um, you can catalog it, and then you can assign policies to, to 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 that data. And and I guess the other thing about the 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 data cataloging that is that is 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 it. Let's be clear, it's quite a dry subject. This um, apologies for those people who do this day to day, but what I think I think this even you know the kind of sexier piece of this. Is that you know you can create these kind of Amazon style data marts. So, you know, if you've got that data in the system, people can access that data catalog and they can effectively shop for the data that they need. You know, they can they can browse the data sets that are available, they can look at sample data there. They can look at, you know, you can create Amazon style reviews of the data. So people have used it before. They can rate the usefulness of that data that, um, you know, from um, from previous consumers. Um, and it's this idea that you could. Add, you know, look at the look in this in in, in this in this uh, catalog and you can add your the data sets you want to a shopping basket and check out. And that checking out then. I guess it, you know, it can be done in a number of different ways. It can be done based on who you are, and if you have the right permissions, you'll 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 get access to that data, or you can um, you can push that request to a data steward, um, and that data steward can can evaluate that request and the intention for use against kind of the terms on which the data can be used. Um, I, I think it's a really key. It's a really key part of the um, uh, uh, of the lake house, really, and um, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes on it. Um, so let's go back to the let's go back to the slide. So I put the so I put the data catalog in here now, and I've also said the kind of data sets that may sit in this lake house. Um, but that's that's just examples. Yeah, this is this lake house to me is the is the key, isn't it? We want to make sure that we've got as everything, everything in there. You know, it, it's the it should be the one stop shop for for all our national data, whether it comes from health or social care or or, 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 or wherever that should be our that should be our place. And it should be serviced with a, with, you know, with a very solid front end. Um, just to say a couple of other things there, because I've added some more bits into this diagram. So, and of course, you know, publishing this data is important as well. We need the means and mechanisms to be able to publish that data, whether it's in its native format or whether it needs to be in anonymized format or whether it used, needs to be pseudonymized for the purposes of research. Um, and also to be able to publish data that is that, that is of value to the public. Um, and the lake, you know, the lake house and the tools have to be able to service those needs. I've done, I, I've done, um, I'm from an infrastructure background here, and I put an infrastructure kind of thing at the bottom there about how people will access it, whether it's over the web or PSBA or over VPN. Um, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just reflecting on on that really. Just the point, the fact that you know we need to have a look at how people would access this information and what um, what permissions they that they would need to um, to, to 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 get to that data. Um, I think um, I, so. That's the publications and the and the access methods. 
Uh, let's get on to the next. Um, let's get on to the next um, piece here. Sorry. George. Back. Sorry, George. Questions, Lake House specific. Can you take them now? Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. I, I think you, what you've said there might have um, answered the questions already. So the first one is: Will the data Lake House also support data that doesn't fall well into fire, such as telemonitoring yes. Lake data? I think you've covered that really with the list of the sorts of data that we'll want in there. Kitchen sink. It's a kitchen sink. The kitchen sink. Everything. Everything. Um, <laughs> the next one, I was tempted to answer myself. So um, is this just modernising the ISD warehouse and how does this being central benefit anybody outside of NRIS? So no, this isn't modernising the ISD warehouse. This is providing uh, a, a platform, a house, to house that data and to house all data, yeah. Is it this isn't a this isn't an ISD DHCW design? Can I just add to that as well that the ISD warehouse isn't there to serve NRIS either. The ISD warehouse serves data back to everybody who needs the data that that's in there. Just just wanted to add that little five pence in. Um, the next question was. Any particular data catalogue tooling in mind at this point, George? So we haven't made any we haven't made any decisions about platform, OK, but the the the, the catalogue in products out there are varied. Um, the two that the two that I'm aware of are uh, in the Azure space would be Microsoft Purview and in the Google space. It would be a product called Calibra, which isn't a Google product. Um, it's a it's a compatible Google product. So those are the those are the two um, those are the two products that um, uh, that, that I'm aware of in, in in that cloud space. OK, thanks. That was it for now. OK, so the we're near the end, guys. Um, uh, the Data visualization I've put on this. I, I, I've put, sorry, I've, I've put a few more arrows on this diagram, haven't I? Actually, so information services inputs I've put here in the context of the Lake House. So um, whether that's nationally or whether that's from a, from health boards or other organisations, um, you know that data will be here. That data will be here, and it will either get pushed in directly or it will go through an ETL and ELT process um, to get that data um, centrally. I, I, I think, you know, there are the questions about, I Anne raised the one earlier about, well, how's this, you know, how's this going to, how's the local CDR fire thing going to work? And, and it's the same question about how the local data warehouses are going to work with the national lake houses and you know i've got you know this is a journey and and you know my questions are around well what you know what data will be um required by health boards from a national source and what data will be published um nationally as well and and, and does it need to sit in does it all need to sit in 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 two places or uh, all those kind of questions we need to kind of um kind of resolve my my my, my main um the main purpose really is to kind of talk about the right hand side, I suppose, and to make sure that we've built something that is capable of servicing all requests. However, we wish to um, it, to, to implement things, we need to know that it's um, it, it's a performance, scalable, adequate um, solution to, to to solve all problems or to solve all, all the problems that we've we think that we've thought about. Um, I've got a little box on the bottom right there about data visualization. And there's lots of there are lots of different products in that space. And it's important that you know that we have good products that are capable of providing that um, the visualizations of that, of that data as well. Most of those are well rehearsed to you. Uh, I have put in this product called Looker. Look as a third party product and um, I, I've, apologies for those people that I've tried to explain this before. So I think most people are familiar with Power BI, aren't they? And if you um, if you take a list of names and addresses and um, you, you can if you point Power BI at that, 
they can plot all those on a map quite easily because it's aware of those postcodes and how to represent that data. It's not so cool with health data and Looker is a product that is kind of fire aware and HR7 aware so that if you point Looker at that kind of data, it knows how to represent that without having to write any kind of custom. I'm not saying I'm not saying that there, that there aren't any yards to do, <laughs> but what I'm saying is is that it, 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 in the same way as Power BI can work on addresses, um, Looker can, can can understand medical um, medical and clinical terms and 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 represent those through visualizations with with the minimal of effort. So um, other products are available, and I felt obliged to put visualization at the end of the chart. Uh, from the fire, the fire building blocks thing this afternoon, uh, we will go through some of the visualizations in this in this area because we've seen some very interesting visualizations in the fire space. Um, so please, I'm I'm almost begging that you attend this afternoon's meeting now. So um, so please, it's uh, it, it's a very exciting session this afternoon, and I encourage you to attend. Um, I think that's it. Now, look, I put some other stuff on the bottom here. Uh, because it's stuff that it's stuff that we thought about, and I have a, I have some slides to talk more about this stuff, um, and we really should have a menti poll to see whether everybody anybody's got the appetite to to to, to understand a little bit more about that in in, in this in, in in this set in this session or want another session to to go through this stuff. So I've written at the bottom there about having a managed data science platform. So. Um, it means exactly that. Um, we need to build a, a, a data science platform and we can build it in a number of different ways. Um, I, I, I think for those people, so for, for the, the purposes of this um, session, there are ways that we can build this. Um, and I think the, I think the issue for the issue is, is that we need to build it cleverly so that we focus on the actual doing of data science and not on the mechanics of the infrastructure. So there are a number of different ways that one can build a data science environment up. You can either build it using a mixture of containers and platform as a service products, which you manage yourself. You could consume a, a, a cloud machine learning environment that contains um, that contains models, data models and, and, and algorithms that can tell you what a cat and a dog looks like, which then you can customize and add your own models in. Or you can um, you can you use a, a managed data science platform, which is your own. Um, it's it, it, it's that all that stuff that you would have to build with infrastructure that's abstracted for you. You just point your Jupyter notebooks at that and you start using it. So there are three kind of there are three kind of offerings um, in that space. Whichever of those offerings we use, I think there are some really interesting um, there are some really interesting things going on in that space. And, and, and it's not and this stuff isn't space age futures thing It's kind of here now. So so one of those things is this, um, you know, the, one of the cloud platforms allows you to create, um, it has a DICOM store where you can store DICOM data and you can link that DICOM imaging to machine learning. So, you know, you push a picture into that environment, your machine learning environment looks at that picture, it puts a diagnosis or whatever, or whatever predictive algorithm that you're looking to apply against that picture it will take that it will put it um, it will it will add that um, that diagnosis for example and then it will write it back to the DICOM store and that data can be consumed again as a clinician or for research purposes you can push that to a de-identified store so you know that technology the de-identification bit it looks at that DICOM image it does an, you know, an optical character recognition scan of that image. It redacts the patient identifiable information and publishes it to a DID store. There's some very 
interesting, not space age practical um, products out there that are doing that today. There are also um, there are also interesting things in the in the NLP uh, um, field as well. So of course, you know we can write our our, our, our algorithms and do NLP ourselves, um, and, and there's something that you know th this whole national data resource. This is about this is the complete picture, isn't it? It's the, it's we want to be doing that, but there are also um, products out there that give you a head start on that. So things that are things like SNOMED aware. So if you've got clinical notes, you know, you've got you've got platforms that are available out there that have got that stuff built in already that can start looking at that data and pulling out the, um, the clinical codes from that. So that's a really interesting area. And um, again, I'd be very happy to to speak about the data science piece and the NLP, the DICOM stuff. Be very happy to sp to speak to uh, in, in a separate session along with the data cataloging and and, and take people's um, uh, and take people's views um, about that because uh, I'd really like to I really like to engage in in that piece. Now, I want the, I've put on this diagram as well is the open air piece because um, somebody asked about open open air. So, okay, so. We've got a session about the clinical data engine and open air uh, coming up as part of these um, building blocks. And uh, I think I think it's fair to say that we kind of acknowledge the local implementation of open air and um, and kind of try just to say where where it fits. So we've got like the Welsh Clinical Portal, yeah, and, and that uses open air, doesn't it, um, as a clinical data repository. And what that does is it stores some very specific clinical data for uses like cancer and cardiology, all that good stuff. Um, but the the CDR is fire, yeah. So um, the open air what helps with um, this is my view, and John will, will 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 come in later, no doubt about this. So so open air is is a is a platform that contains you know the full shebang of entities that allow you to create to develop applications rapidly because you've got a comprehensive a comprehensive back-end um, schema of data that has been worked through by clinicians so for for to to sort of rock up a new application open air is a is a very valid and um a, a, and a, and good way of of, of of building stuff but that said we need to get the data, the best of of that data, the things that we're interested in. Um, we need to have that that data serviced, surfaced, sorry, in our fire repository. So I, I'm not sure federate is is the, is the correct um, word, but what we want to do is we're going to have to kind of standardize the flow of data that needs to get to fire through whatever kind of subscription model that is. Um, and we need to make sure that that data, when it leaves open air, is kind of normalised, um, uh, you know, for that kind of standards-based access in fire. Um, so they, they work. They work together. Um, they work together. I, I see open air as I say. If if you're a, I don't know, if you're a Queen fan, you know, and you like track three in Night at the Opera, then you're in the open air domain. If you like Queen's Greatest Hits Volume One, yeah, then you're in the fire domain. What what fire will do is it will we will we, we intend to present the the key items in fire. And if you need then to go into the detail in the weeds and to learn, you know, to listen to the third track on that album, then what we intend to do is to is to provide access through open air via API management for those for those use cases. But the but the majority of the data we would expect that people would wish to access will be federated, pushed into the Firestore. Okay, so um, I've got a couple. I've got a couple of just a couple of general points to say now, and then take questions. So, so you know, it's clear from this. You know, we need to we need to equip a team here, don't we? Of of kind of data engineers focused on acquisition, 
fire experts. We need to work with our integration colleagues. We need to work with our uh, all our local organizations and health boards. We need some very strong data stewardship and governance. We need people that are great at writing uh, reports and 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 um, visualizing and and analyzing data. We um, we need data science experts to build up um, to um, to to build up that platform as well. Um, we want to use managed services where possible. So we talked about Firely this morning, and we can't uh, you know we can't preempt anything at the moment. But the ideal for us would be to use um, you know uh, platform as a service product. So thinking about the fire piece there, something that is that is there that doesn't require the hard yards, the watering, the feeding, the maintenance of the underlying platform. So the focus for us is on the doing and not the underlying tech piece. Now I'm not for one in minute saying that that you know that monitoring and uh, and making sure that that it's resilient and 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 we go through the same level of diligence for the infrastructure as as we would if we were doing it ourselves. But I, but I think focusing on the doing is is where we're uh, as where we're at here. And in terms of the cloud, you know, if it is in the cloud. We want to make sure that we pay for it in a in a savvy way, you know, so that the platforms, we don't rock up and pay for them and not use them. We pay for them as we consume them, not, you know, not just have something there waiting, um, waiting on the meter like a waiting taxi. Um, and I think. I think that's it for my spiel really today. Um, can, can uh, It's probably a good idea now to pick up on on all the questions, Beck. Yeah, great. Do you want me to swap this screen over to the menu? Yes, yeah, please do. Yeah, would be great. No problem. I've the ones that we've answered during the sessions, I've marked as answered so we don't re rehearse them. I've captured your answer, so I will circulate it to everybody so that we've got a record of what we answered um, already. Can you? Let me know and you can see my screen. Yeah, I can see it now, Beck. OK, so the first one, fire is all well and good for getting everything into the same language. Eventually, how does changing the language and having a single language solve the issue around governance? A lot of the shit, this has continued. A lot of the sharing isn't about language and capability, but, but Enris refusing to share. And I hope we've moved on. I hope people feel differently about the place we're in today, but I don't know if Rob or George wants to add to that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm hoping that what happens through October is is a demonstration that we we are not refusing to share quite the contrary, actually, that what we're actually trying to do is is embrace sharing um, as part of the regime of opening up the architecture and that that sharing is kind of two ways that we want to we, we want to we want to consume data in the center but share data that's consumed in the center back out to the health boards and trusts where that data was created i think that, that i think george alluded to this earlier actually the, the, the bit for me and this might be down to trust so it might be where this question is coming from is what does the architecture look at like that actually enables that sharing so do we persist data twice or you know once for every organization and once for the center or do we persist but actually enable the sharing to gain perspective on the data based on who the user is and i i'm really intrigued as to the answer to that question and it might have to be it might have to be that we do it both ways to start with and then major on on just one one way um, down the line but I think that's all about maturity and trust and actually learning to work together in an open and 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 um, cooperative way. Thank you. I'll take myself off mute there. Um, how is the data capacity for all of this going to be funded? Strikes me that the most obvious way for this to fail is to not get enough resources to work fully. Uh, I think that's a great question, um, and I think it's one that that that, that concerns us all. Um, the, the 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 again, the meetings through October, they're roadmaps. They're not they're not 
fully costed from a um, you know a, a, a cash perspective or a resources perspective. They're actually identifying the kind of journey that we think we should be on and the the technologies that we think we should we should we should be implementing. Um, accepting of these acceptance of these roadmaps means that we need to go off and actually you know create the costing regimes and the the funding streams to actually make these make these reality. And let's be quite frank about it. That's that's where we will where we where we will pass or fail. Yeah, I I, I want to pick up on this a little bit actually. So. In, in the DHCW sphere, we're going through a cloud strategy. We, there's a cloud kind of strategy that's going on at the moment from an from an infrastructure lens. I, I think primarily, and 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 this um, you know this whole issue about capacity and and and, and funding. Those those are things that that, that the organisation is looking at there. When we talk about capacity in the cloud, doing data capacity in the cloud, I think it's important to. I think it's important to distinguish between, you know, capacity and service. So, so from a data capacity perspective, you know, it costs what two cents per gigabyte to to hold data in the in in the in the cloud. It's it's cheap. The 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 costs come in consume in when you consume stuff. So if you you know, if you process something in file or you process something in the data warehouse, then you pay you pay for the compute charge uh, as you use it there. So I think it's important to, in terms of the data capacity, I, I think you know, I think I think it'd be a great problem to have. You know, to have terabytes of data, you know, petabytes of data in the cloud and start worrying about the cost of that data. It's really for me about the. Um, it's about the the costs of of kind of servicing that data. Um, I think that's one consideration. And I would say as well that in terms of some of the some of the bits in the cloud platform as well is that you can limit as well. So so for instance, if you think about the if you think about a lake house, so say you ask that lake house. Let's forget about the NHS a minute. Yeah. Say you go and ask the lake house to find all the instances of George in Wikipedia. Yeah. So I could run that query and I'll I'll pay I'll pay for the cost of servicing that query. Yeah. And it will be quite expensive if it goes through um, Wikipedia, but it'll be very quick and I'll pay for it because um uh, because I have to. Um, but there's another way as well where you can instead of saying I'll pay for it uh, to, to to be de um, I'll pay for it on demand. You can also do the, another model where you can say, well, I only want to allocate ten thousand workers a month um, to do this work. So if it needs the ten thousand a month worker, then it waits until the first one is available again. So I think this this cost about th this thing about funding. Um, we kind of need to look at the weeds of it, really, and try and just focus on, on on where we're on where we would be worried about the costs, understand what they could be, and look at ways that we could mitigate for that. Thanks, George. Um, from from a program director perspective for for the NDR, um, just to add to that, um, and to echo Rob's point, really, you know, the the cost. The, the, the million dollar question is what's the envelope that we need to open up the architecture and to build a national data resource um, and we will need to work that through as these sessions you know conclude um, and we translate all of those roadmaps into PIDs and projects um, they, you know we are funded within the NDR program and um, that won't be enough I'm sure and um, we will need to look at what the funding envelope needs to be and where that where that comes from. But um, yeah, to be worked out. I'll move on. Um, sorry, let me just mark these as answered. And um, this we touched on this earlier. And um, do we think that we covered this in terms of local systems being able to take on fire terminology or is this extra work for the NDR team? Um, presuming that will be picked up in further sessions, guys. Yeah, I, I, we, we, we should pick it. We should pick it up here if we've got a, if we've got a, 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 an answer to it. 
Um, I, I, don't, I don't know is the answer. I, I'm, I'm going to defer to my fellow architects on this if you've got an, a, a view. Um, I'll, I'll come in here, George. Um, Thanks, yes, um, uh, an interesting question. I think some of the the linkages on on on, on Do George's diagrams, you know, sort of show that the the relationships that that they exist between the um, the health board stores of data and and and, and, and the fire server. And, and obviously, there's there's a lot of work as, as people are pointing out um in 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 doing that mapping and work working it all out um i think i think the the, the relevant session um to talk about this in in, in depth is the, the fire standards and profiling um what, what we need to do is obviously um it can't be if, if we're going down this route of, of of using you know adopting fire um we'll, we'll need to invest in our, our our skills um you know both both in the center and in and and not in the center to um have the skill to do you know, to map the data in, into fire um you know I, i've got a good view of you know, having because of my background I have a good view of the sorts of data we we currently hold in in, in the repositories of the national repositories um and and you know have, have a fairly good idea how that how that data can, can be mapped to fire um that said, you know, the, 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 you know, there's 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 a lot of work involved there. What we need to do is is ensure that we're we're, we're publishing correctly um, Wales standards for fire, fire fire profiles. Um, this also links into something um, called the the UK Core, which will which we'll discuss at the fire profiling and, and standard session. But this is this is becoming not just a stand for for, for, for Wales. This is this is a stand for healthcare going going forward, or you know, or as 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 you know, as, as I see it at the moment. Um, so these are skills I think that everyone working in IT with healthcare will increasingly um, be be um, needing to to, to 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 pick up and and, and learn. Um, and as our, you know, our, our architect review says, you know, we, we, it's all for the the adoption of local standards. That's that's where, you know, unless we're able to standardise how the data is is going, it will remain in 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 distributed location, distributed languages. So I think it's a necessary thing that we have to do. What we need to work out is is the how we provide that support to all teams working in fire to a publish the standards and 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 you know make the rules clear. And be provided examples and the expertise and and um, assistance where that's needed. So I think, as as George is saying in his, in his slides, um, you know, we need we need to build that capability, and that's one of the that's you know that 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 resource in terms of cap, you know skill and capability is something we need to build to support this. Thanks, Mark. I'll go to Gareth Williams and then Rob. Thanks. Um, just on that question there around local systems, I think this is important to state. We are not forcing the fire, any sort of existing flows of data. We're not forcing on existing systems that they must become uh, um, fire, use the fire standard. So anything, it's just about we are trying to make that capability, if you like. So that if the concern around, around this question is about you know is there do we have to plan in you know our existing systems change into fire i think they'll just be part of your normal business planning and there, there's going to be loads of dependencies so i don't think it's there's if i think for us if a local system can do fire then obviously that would be the preference but i don't think there's a pressure to force local systems to switch thanks gareth rob yeah, I'm just building on what Gareth said. Um, as part of the digital architecture review, when Channel 3 came in, uh, Welsh Government and the health boards and, and then was as well as assembled a list of systems in a spreadsheet. There were 850, um, 852, as I recollect, um, systems out there providing benefit to the health boards and the trusts, um, as well as those in the centre. There's just no way that we can actually consider a world where 
you know, everything coming from those systems that we might want to consume would all be in fire in the same way that we've never been able to actually get every one of those systems to provide data um, in, in HR7 version 2. So the world will be hybrid for, for years and years to come. I think the challenge for us actually and building on the point that Mark made is that once we actually start assembling these standards, so the UK Fire core standard is a really, really exciting initiative, that we then need to make sure that the supplier communities are actually adopting that standard. So they're coming in ready rolled. So bit by bit as that 852 get replaced, we are adopting the standard with the new systems coming in. But the point Gareth made is very, very valid. The world will be hybrid for many, many years to come. Thanks, Rob. Um, one observation for me, I suppose, is we could drop the word local because we, we, we mean any existing systems, really, don't we? Whether they're local or national. Um, Absolutely. OK, thank you. I'll move on to the next one. Um, national data store, national data resource, national data platform. Are there official definitions of each? I'm not sure we have done that in the documents themselves, but I think that's a really good um, request yeah i struggled with that one on the slide so i put that up i i called it national data repository I, I like national data platform but yeah we need to get the terminology the terminology down you're right it would really help me with the question people keep asking me which is what is the ndr <laughs> so yeah i think that that's something that we'll definitely take as an action from this work yeah i, I think what we've described and after the fire stuff today is the national data platform isn't it Thank you. Um, decision making process around on prem versus cloud. Oh, that's good. I hope that the, um, the person that has asked that can attend this afternoon's um, meeting. OK, more questions to be had this afternoon. They had to go at 10, so they aren't here. <laughs> Let's hope they arrive this afternoon. Can we have the slides? Uh, can the slides be circulated, guys? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Any thoughts on real-time databases in this area? Who's asking? Um, uh, me, John Jones. Hello, John. Hey, buddy. Uh, I was just um, you were just talking about the uh, the. The, the the fancy step in the cloud with the um, commoditization of the the data sets and bits and pieces like that, um, which is you know that's good. The other aspect of that use, I thought, may be you know um, real time dashboards for contributors of the data or clinical use and stuff like that. I was wondering whether that's a part of that vision at all. Just oh, just yeah. curiosity, really, George. Yeah, yeah. Those those the na the national fire platform and the national data lake house are the sources of that information. And that diagram I put about, up about consuming on premise um, applications. Then that there's an arrow to both of those to both of those areas. Absolutely. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. Thank you. Sorry. Is this implying that the National Data Store work is a useless waste of time, even though it's actually doing part of the NDR? I don't, I don't understand the question. Sorry, who's who's asking? Um, does the person who asked the question want to come forward? I'm assuming this relates to the proof of concept work that's been done within the NDR programme in the Azure platform. OK, so so in answer to that question, yeah, what, what, what we've what we've described here today is is a, is a vision that's based on um, that, that's based on a, 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 an extensive discovery process. The, the Azure work, um, if that's what it's being referred to, has been a, a, has been a great learning exercise, a great um, a, 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 a great opportunity to to do some proof of concept work. Um, I don't think I would if if, if you use it, if that's if this question is uh, is saying that the is your platform is actually doing part of the NDR. Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure which part of the NDR it is doing at the moment, but whoever wants to um, whoever's asked that question, we're very happy um, to take that offline with a, with, with a group of us as architects, if you'd like to. Thanks, George. I'll just pause for if anybody wanted to come in. OK. 
Um, direct access to open air. Didn't we hear previously that all clinical record data would go into fire? Governing the open air data design to enable sharing in fire isn't trivial, but was indicated. Uh, it's not trivial. No, I, I don't think anyone would, do, would, would, would disagree with that. Um, I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure about the context of the first part of the question. Sorry, I, I, I'm not sure whether I've been is, involved in those conversations. There's a hand going up, John. But did the person who asked the question want to elaborate first before we answer it? Uh, this is coming out from Lauren Bevan. So this is unright stars. Actually, I think it's it's actually Andy who's had to leave us. Um, we're concerned that opening additional channels in open air is just going to make everything so much more complicated. And we had we thought we'd, we'd we'd got out of that one. I thought we'd got to a point where there was a definitive commitment to fire for interoperability. Yes. Um, and in the next one, I actually put uh, I, I put the next one on the list, which is to suggest that if there really are pieces pieces of data in the open air system that have to be there and can't come through into fire, then rather than having direct access to open air, maybe what we need is the guarantee that those actually end up in the lake house so that they can be coordinated with from there. Yeah. It's a matter it's a matter of containing the complexity of the national interoperability space, which is, yeah, a, is, a, think, is a concern that Andy and I share. Yeah, I think I think that's a really I think that's a really good uh, a, a good a good statement, a good a good question there. Um, I, I see I see open air as that uh, is that mechanism for rapid application development and, and my expectation would be that not many people would go to open air to pick up the you know that that fine that fine granular detail I would expect our fire repository to service 90 to 95 percent of all data requests. Thanks, George. I think John put his hand up. Yeah, if I could just add to that. Well, it, there's very little to add to it, actually, and, and your 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 concerns are are uh, you know are warranted. Uh, you know, the intention is as as we previously discussed. You know, open air uh, you know born data will be available via um, potentially a variety of different different you know uh, means, but we wouldn't be expecting you to go directly into into open air with that. One of the one of the very you know uh, attractive aspects about this approach, uh, and in terms of how the data lake house would would come part and parcel of this, is that we would we now have the ability to take data from open air, and we don't have to worry about a fire conversion in order for you to consume it. You can consume it using other 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 means, other tools, um, and and so therefore any open air pertinent data that does need to be available for interoperability purposes will have a fire facade. Um, uh, and, and a fire capability associated with that, and all of the other data that is, is needed for second uses, et cetera, et cetera, uh, will be available uh, via the you know the wider you know data data lake house capabilities. So um, yeah, nothing's changed certainly from our previous discussion. I'll go to Rob and then Anne. Oh, I was just going to, um, you know, build on that. We we, we have this problem anyway, um, whether we use open air or or not. In 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 you know, with other schemas that um, that we will find difficult to move data through fire or HS7 version two. Um, you know, across the divide. Um, so you know, LIMS, for example, has got a lot of analyzer information that um, that probably won't map um, to the um, to the standard message formats, but we still want that in the lake house. So we're going to have to we're going to have to you know pipeline that data in different ways additionally to the fire movement. Thanks, Rob. Anne. Yeah, I was just going to say that that the problem that Rob just um, is just discussed is 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 a problem that we're going to because I've um, I've just had the unfulfilling experience of trying to put the PROMS metadata defined in the information standard out of the you know the information standard central team trying to see how that might fit into fire and um, for that and I think for other various other streams of data that there will be the conclusion that it just doesn't fit we shouldn't try but we should make there should be an alternative route for sharing and I'm I'm what I'm looking for is a commitment that the they will that will have the simplicity of a fire for everything that's sensible to put into fire and i would suggest that any everything constituting part of the usable clinical record would, would be the right concept to have and then other material 
would be accessible through the lake house with the right kind of linkage in Providence. So it would be able to link it all up as it's needed. Uh, and, and that we have a very strong presumption against alternate channels with yet another, because so, I think everyone knows I've been concerned about open air from the beginning, not because I don't think it works, but because it, it is in itself quite a complex format. And as was highlighted earlier, we've got quite a challenge, all of us learning about fire. Um, and we, we shouldn't s stretch that to lots of us needing to learn about open air as well. On the other hand, if the use of open air as a prop platform with forms running off it, which I acknowledge it's pretty good at, if that actually is taken up outside DHCW, that would become its own little economy. And all of that stuff would then need to go to fire. So we'd, we'd be managing, again, managing that as one problem. So that, that that's my angle on this. Rob? You're on mute. Sorry, sorry, Becca, that was a lazy hand. I've, I've taken lazy. it down. All right, I, it's, it's George here. Uh, Anne, I think you're pushing an open door there. You know, you're, what, what, sorry, I, that, I think that, I, that, that was a mistaken hand. Not yeah, hand. I, I, I think Anne <laughs> pushed. I think you're pushing an open door there about how that data would be presented. You know, if it's not in the seat, if it's not in fire, then it should it, it should it should ideally be in the lake house. I I, I don't know whether. Any of the other architects who would would have a contrary view to that? No, I agree entirely, George. You know, the limbs data being being the example as, as quoted earlier. Similar similar challenge. Okay, um, moving on to the last of three questions. How do the wider NDR team fit into all of this? This looks to be very DHCW specific. Um, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. Sorry, Rob. I'm not sure I understand that question. Yeah. What, what we've what we've discussed here is not DHCW specific at all. We've we've discussed a national a, a national data platform, and we've discussed ways that in which we can open up the architecture for the benefit of everybody. I, I, I don't. I, I, I. Whoever's asked that question, can you can can you be more specific about what you mean? Okay. Yeah. Um. To, just to give a bit of a perspective, really, as um uh, heading up the NDR program, you know, the NDR program um commissions resource both centrally and locally, um to deliver against um the the objectives of the NDR program. Um. Yes, a lot of this thinking um, that we're presenting today has come from the chief architects who are, you know, sitting in the central team. Um, and, and, and I think that's OK. This is now about widening those sessions and actually working through what's the job for doing and actually how are we going to use our resources locally and nationally to work together to get to the end goal. And um, so if anybody does feel, you know, particularly within the NDR programme that they're not involved or they're not cited or they're not, you know, working in a way that they would want to work, then um, I, I'd suggest that, um, you know, speak to speak to myself, speak to Rob um, and let's work that through. Yeah, can I can I just add add here? Look, this is the first airing, for, you know, formal airing of 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 what we've been going through um, over the last two or three months. And in an ideal world, we would have been working on this, um, you know, as I said at the outset, eighteen months ago. But the pandemic has 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 taken that opportunity away from us. Um, this thinking will evolve. Um, and this thinking will um, involve um, a far wider group of people, and has currently, um, you know, been been in the room at the moment, kicking the the, the logical tires um, as we kind of move things to, you know, the more physical, um, um, you know, establishment of this architecture that we're we're, we're proposing. I I would hate to think that that people would leave this meeting thinking that this was the preserve of DHCW or people affiliated to DHCW. What we're trying to do in here is to actually open this up to the whole of the service in Wales and actually say, look, we want you to get on board. You want, we want you to get involved and we want you to become part of this Team Wales approach. You know, call it federated, call it what you will. But this is a different way of working um, to perhaps what has gone before us uh, over the previous um, eight, nine, ten years. 
um, and a new opportunity that I hope we can all get excited about. Thank you. The requirements of intelligence for value framework and how do we enable data acquisitions to understand if we've really delivered value equals outcome cost? I'm not sure necessarily that that's a question or, or more of a statement. Did anybody want to pick up on that? Add to it? Um, OK. Uh, one of the things I just go back to in response to that is the data strategy work um, that we've commissioned for the data strategy for the NDR, and that will actually be about synthesising all of the requirements that we need to satisfy for all of our sort of use cases, um, and and the value, you know, the value agenda is will play a huge part um, in that. Yeah, we want we want to answer the questions being asked, not the one that uh, we'd like to be asked. Yeah. Um, when all three million of us fit into 32 gig. <laughs> Check us on the USB stick. Just check us on a USB. That, that sorts the concerns about um, the costs of the costs of this out, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, that's it for the question, the Q&A, but there's the feedback slide. I'll jump to that quickly then, George. Yeah, thanks. Just um, I think just as a as a um, some feedback for us, yeah. Just just have a look at some of the the, the feedback that's that, that's come in there. So some of these are questions, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Someone just, didn't get the memo on the Q and A, did they? <laughs> it's all right. That's all right. So, so I think the definitions one we've picked up. Um, I don't know if you want to pick up this one. Are there thoughts about allowing writes with fire as well as reads by the API management or any around migration for legacy systems, e.g. HL7 and variant of forms as contributors to national records? Yes. <laughs> and yes. <laughs> yes, and yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, that was me again. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what will be the fire demographics model? I suggest that that will be picked up in the demographics. Friday. Friday yeah. session, yeah, Becca. Friday session. Um, guys, would you agree or not? As well as open as well as using open standards for interoperability, opening the architecture is also about architecting with the lid off, i.e., letting others have transparency over the architecture and process of architecting. Uh, <laughs> Or neither does I, it. It's, a, it's quite a philosophical question, is it? Quite a philosophical question. I suppose, in principle, yes, but we need to make sure that we are, um, you know, using standards appropriately. And um, and I think standards, uh, usage of standards, is is is, is you know, is about um, being able to, um, you know, consume systems and services in a in a in a in a transparent way um, and reducing cost. Um, if 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 this is about you know establishing um, you know non-standard APIs to meet fine-grained user requirements, then then yeah, I guess we're all open for that. And I think the key takeaway from that really is around transparency, isn't it? I think we're going into a new world here, and I think you know these sessions demonstrate that actually this is about us being collaborative, and and hopefully those will translate into partnership collaborative work programs going forward. Um, are there any implications on UK GDPR data residency for Google and Azure? I'll go to Mr. Olney for that one. Well, that's a really question for our governance people in terms of data residency. Uh, you, you know, uh, Google and Azure both have UK um, UK data centers, as do AWS. So I think the answer is whatever platform we use, um, you know, our IG colleagues will be all over that and ensuring that the data is safe and is in the place that it that it should be. Um, and, and hopefully we'll be picking that up as well as part of our sort of key considerations to the work that we're doing. Well, I don't say hopefully, we, we will be. Um, I don't think there's a choice there. I guess the other thing to add there, Becca, and it doesn't really matter whether this is on-prem or it's in the cloud, but as we start to, um, you know, 
uh, exploit this data in, in in different ways. We are going to have to make sure that we've got the underlying foundations of of, of audit and 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 logging and and um, you know monitoring in place to to make sure that that data is being used in safe and secure ways. So it's not I just about the kind of physical location of where that data is. It's about it's about how we um how we manage the usage of that data. Yeah. And I, I for those of us who are involved in sort of you know data management and um and particularly in the NDR program, we know that IG is a huge complexity in this area. Um we are gonna, you know, I think people see opening up the architecture as an open free for all for data and it absolutely can't be that. And um, so we, we do need to work through um, what all those safety nets are. Um, on that note, that, that was the Q&A finished and that's the feedback. Could I ask that um, people add some feedback to the mentee in terms of how they found the session as well? I think that that would be really sort of what the guys are looking for in terms of the coverage, what was missed, um, yeah, and just general feedback. And I'll stop sharing and hand back over to the guys. Um, thanks, Becca. I I found that um, a fascinating session. Uh, obviously, I've been able to um, to see George's slides previously. Um, I guess this is the first airing of that um, to, to you guys. Um, so that feedback via Menti or, or, you know, via, um, you know, um, other communication channels from yourself through to me um, would be most welcome. Um, further sessions that we run through the week will all be, um, you know, will all be fronted by a, um, you know, by a document, um, the ABB roadmap document. Those roadmap documents are in various guises of maturity. Some of them have been circulated um, earlier. Some of them will be circulated a bit later. Um, but they are first versions, and those versions will will need your comments and will need your feedback um, through the sessions, you know, and um, on the review sheets prior to the sessions, if you're able, if you're able to, and then post session as well, where we will um, take those on board and actually issue further versions of that document based on our engagement with you. Um, our aim is to actually take those documents to the NDR technical steering group and the issues that you raise such that they can then be sent into the um i'm going to call it the november ndr program board with a view for the ndr program board to um send them on to the welsh technical standards board for for endorsement and that's what we're hoping that we'll get out of these sessions but i accept that what we're doing is sharing information um for the first time and that this process may need to be iterative um, but we welcome your feedback and we'll continue to at all future sessions as well. So unless there's no further questions, I'll draw this meeting to a close. I'd like to thank George for um, for his presentation today um, and for um, for taking on board the, the the questions in 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 the in the way that he has done through the through the session. And I look forward to seeing you um, at at further sessions. Could I also just say that it's been um, it's been um, really pleasing to see so many people um, registering to come on to these um, to these sessions. In fact, a little bit overwhelming and, and some people through the chat and in personal messages to me have actually frustratingly highlighted that the emails that they've sent um, didn't get actioned. Um, I've completely um, completely uh, underestimated the amount of interest in these sessions. And yesterday and the day before and the day before that were like denial of service attacks on my email account. So if I've missed you uh, and not booked you onto a session, it's certainly not because uh, um, I've not wanted to. It's just simply because I've missed your email in the plethora of different emails and, and notifications that people have accepted meeting requests. Um, and um, um, we would, um, you know, if you're not on a session, um, then please do, um, you know, drop myself, Becca, or any of the architects a line, and they will actually uh, make sure that you were on a future session. Um, so apologies from me for for completely underestimating the interest in these sessions. But thank you for attending. Look forward to seeing you at further sessions. We can get. We can get a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, because uh, we haven't broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've just realised, and perhaps an early lunch as well. So Sorry, hopefully, see some of you this afternoon. So I can just ask a practical question about the session. Um, with the way that Teams works, is there any way that we can give 
people who weren't here access to view the recording because that might yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. Anne. That's a good point. Actually, we 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 have already committed to that. So colleagues in Welsh government who've not been able to join us today have asked for access to the recording. We'll work we'll work that one out um, so that these are actually these are actually there. Not as I said at the outset, not just because of the the need to make accurate notes from the meeting, but are actually there as a statement of 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 the uh, of the actual meeting as well, and can be consumed by those who weren't present. Just a practical thing there. I, usually, once some once the meeting ends and somebody presses stop, the recording should be available to everybody in the chat. Um, so, um, well, yeah, we uh, need to be able to broadcast it beyond the team. I think is 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 the point. Oh, okay, here. right. I yeah. see. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So we we need to we need to work that one out. But yes, we will do that. Ab. Okay. Okay. Again, thanks. Every, thanks um, very much, everybody. Look forward to seeing you at future sessions. As I said. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thanks all. Thanks all. Bye. Thank you. Bye.